I brought the Canon T7i, I got another GoPro in my pocket and I'm filming this on the GoPro Max and I thought I'd get out and go make another calm, relaxing nature video. I also brought the Skydio too. this would be a, a decent time to try the, the beacon since it's also just been updated with the firmware. Now I have it set to be in front of me, which is pretty cool. That's one of the things that the Mavic line tends to have a bit of an issue with. I just set up a GoPro at one spot and I've set up the Canon in another spot. And these are videos that I'm gonna use on the new channel that I'm working on. And the cool thing about this new channel is it's going to give me the chance to get out and explore and film things and just kick back and relax standing on this enormous chunk of ice right now. I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos on this channel. Though I am going to do a couple just so you can get an idea of it and hopefully you guys can help me build that channel up. I'm on the fence on what name it's going to go under. I'm debating what I'm going to name the new channel. I'm thinking I'm gonna rename this channel just World of Oz since I always promote it as World of Oz. And I'm gonna have another channel that's just Sean Oz. And it's gonna be photography, nature videos, relaxing stuff, where eventually I'll be able to sell some of these nature photos, put up the MP3s of some of these just babbling brooks. So you guys can just download just the sounds if you're not interested in the video to go with them. This new channel is gonna give me the opportunity to start writing music again. It's gonna be a totally different kind of music than my old band used to be. babble about my new channel that's in the works. Hopefully it'll be up by the end of this month. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the Skydio 2. right down the road from the house. I could make tons of videos just of this little area of the stream. Oh, I'm getting sidetracked. I've not done a whole lot with the Skydio and the Beacon. I've mainly been using it with the controller. And if I do use it with the Beacon, it's also attached to my phone, the app on the phone, you know? For me so far, that has been the best way to use it when tracking things. Today, we are going to experiment with just the Beacon. So if you've been curious about how to use the Skydio with the Beacon, I'm gonna try to see if I can get the wand mode to work, as well as I'm gonna play around and see if I can get the height to change. Since I do have the eight foot like uh, height ceiling turned off through the app, I'm hoping maybe with the beacon, I can get that to, to go lower than what it normally wants to go. It's crazy why I wait for these other cameras to finish filming. I'm just walking around exploring and I feel like I'm a 12 year old kid, man out in the woods behind my house, exploring for the first time. Do you guys remember that feeling? Most of us did it when we were kids. We went out back in the park behind our neighborhoods. We found some woods somewhere. And you thought you were like in the middle of a jungle once you got deep down inside of them. Although you were like right by the road the whole time. This is the beacon. You can control the Skydio just with this little gizmo right here. It's not exactly intuitive when you first get it, but Skydio does have a website with directions on how to use it that you're gonna need to read to be able to figure out how to actually use it. To turn it on, you just hold this blue button and it should instantly connect with your Skydio once it's powered on. Sometimes it's a pretty quick connection, other times it takes a hot minute. I'm still waiting on the beacon to connect. If you own one of these and you're using just the beacon, take off from your hand, not the ground. It has a better chance of finding you to track you than if you were to take off from just the ground. So once you have it connected through GPS, you then hold the blue button 
and it goes to ready to fly mode. And now it's ready to launch. That means it's ready to take off. Watch what the drone does when we take off. It doesn't just go straight up. It's gonna go out and away from me and then it will turn around and catch me in its camera and lock onto the GPS. And it just takes off, turns around and it should go straight into tracking mode and have me in its sight. And then you can use the little arrows to select back, forwards, wherever you want it to follow you. I'm gonna put it forwards in front of me. And then we're gonna stop and use the wand feature and see if we can control it that way. Ah, oh, dirty cameras land now, what? Now I am taking it a little easy because I do have um, a bunch of cameras on me that I don't wanna break. So far it is holding its level pretty good. It's actually not going as high as I thought it would. So if you hit the red button, it'll go into hover mode. And then with the arrow keys, you can select motion track steering so I can steer it with this. Then you hit the blue button to go back to that mode. And then if I want to use the magic wands, we hold the blue button, point the blue button at it, and then move it. It moves with our hand. And you can direct the height and where you want it. And that's pretty cool. Then you let go of the button and it should stay pretty much locked there. I like that. I like that a lot. I really think I like that quite a bit. And that's one of the cool things, like I was saying earlier. You don't have such good luck with a drone in front of you when you're doing a DJI drone. Every time I've ever tried to do this with a DJI drone in front of me, it typically ends up going to the side and eventually is following from behind. That is definitely something if you're wanting this view, then you're gonna want a drone like this. And as far as I know, the Scadio 2 is the only one that really does this as of yet. Woo, it's getting cold. So then if I'm on the move, instead of wanting to fiddle with a bunch of buttons, I should be able to just push this, move it, and poof, it's in a different spot. I think I like the beacon way more than I used to. I wasn't a big fan of the beacon when I first got it. Like I said, it's not intuitive but holy crap the hold the button push where you want it to go thing that's intuitive <laughs> that's cool. i love that there's a lot of trees in front of me right here so let's uh go ahead and push it at the drone pull it over here we see we can make it go lower or higher Okay, that is so awesome. Whoa, that's crazy. It's like way over there. I think I might need to make a new video, not this one, but another video, really showing how this wand feature works on this drone because I just went from thinking this was a pretty awesome drone to going, holy crap, this is a really, really awesome drone. And it lost me. So it's gonna try to find me again, and here it comes. So far, so good. I think it found me. How cool is that to just point it where you want it and to be able to fly this thing? Using the wand while you're in motion? So much easier than trying to fiddle around with the other ways you can use this. And this wand thing, you're just moving and you just point it. And you go higher. And you can go lower. The lower shots are awesome because that's how you get the horizon. So many people use this thing and keep it so high up that the shots to me really aren't that great. I can't believe the battery had enough juice in it to get all the way back to my house too. This thing is growing on me more and more and more every time I use it. That wand pointing thing is amazing and I'm going to have to do a more intensive video showing you all about how that really works. It's hard for me to really show you as I'm using it, but I've got to figure out a way that I can film that and show you because that could be a make it or break it kind of deal if you're on the fence on this drone. Make sure you're subscribed and click that little bell icon because I am going to be doing a overall final thoughts on this drone. So if you are on the fence, I'm gonna answer every question I can. So if you have some questions, leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to do my best to include those questions in an upcoming video. 
and get back to you on that. Thanks everyone. I hope everyone's doing well and I'll see you in the next one.